Hello, this is Robin Ford welcoming you to this video course on my particular approach to contemporary blues guitar playing. Some of the things we'll be looking at will be scales used in soloing over traditional blues progressions, chord voicings and rhythms used in comping, we'll talk about string bending and picking techniques, and I'll also show you some blues licks you can use when soloing. So thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. The first scale that we're going to learn here is the G minor pentatonic scale. And uh, penta means five, five tones. The notes of the scale are G, B flat, C, D, F, and G again. And they can be played uh, with a lot of different fingerings, and really you should learn to play them all over the guitar neck, ideally. Uh, I'll give you one fingering of it right now. It goes like this. <laughs> Now, I'll play one more fingering for you. There, again, there are a lot of different places you can go with this, but here's one more. Now, I'll uh, play over a simple blues rhythm in G without chord changes using only the pentatonic scale so you can hear what it sounds like. So you can hear that you can get an awful lot of music out of just those five notes. One simple pentatonic scale. So uh, I have one more that's a slight variation on that scale. The only difference is the addition of the raised 11th or uh, flatted fifth degree uh, of a major scale. So we're adding one note to the five note pentatonic scale. Uh, that note would be in this case, uh, D flat. So the scale would go like this. So I'll play a little bit out of that scale again against just a, a G7 vamp, so you can hear that. Here we go.
So the third scale that we're going to learn here is, uh, again, a slight variation on the pentatonic scale in that rather than using an F natural, we're going to replace it with an E natural. So you still have five notes, but an E natural instead of the F. And that scale sounds like this. <laughs> So now I'm going to play some lines straight out of that scale for you. Now there's a quality about this particular scale that uh, I've always liked a lot, and that it's a, there's a certain brightness in it, a certain upness in using that E instead of the F. So it's got a little sweeter sound. As opposed to the tougher sound that you get when you're using the F. It's a little bit more tearful or something. And I think maybe I picked it up from B.B. Uh, King. He uses that major six quite a bit in his playing. So my playing really is a combination of these three scales uh, whenever I'm playing in a, a basic blues setting. I would say 90% of uh, what you'll hear will be just those things. You have the basic G minor pentatonic scale, the G minor pentatonic scale adding the flatted fifth, and then the modified uh, minor pentatonic scale using an E natural in place of the F. So I'll play for you a little bit now demonstrating the use of all three of those things. Now, so far, we've only played these scales against a G7 chord, but uh, now we're going to play them against all three chords of the blues progression, key of G, and uh, again, the basis of it is the G minor pentatonic scale. Um, but it's interesting to note that these same notes have a different quality when played against the other two chords in the progression. So uh, I'm going to show you what those notes are against the C and the D chords and how they sound and their function. So first we have the G7. The G is the tonic note. B flat is the minor third. C is the fourth. D is the fifth. F is the seventh. And G is the tonic. Now when played against the C7, these notes have a different quality and actually have different they come from different points in the scale. So f the G is the fifth degree of a C, B flat is the seventh, C is the tonic, D is the ninth, F is the fourth, G is the fifth. Now against the D7 chord, G becomes the fourth, B flat becomes the raised fifth, C becomes the seventh, D becomes the tonic, F becomes the raised ninth, and G is the fourth. So that should give you some idea, theoretically, how these notes work against the chords, but more importantly, is they just happen to sound good, 
and that's why people play them. So we're going to play for you now with a full rhythm section, and we'll be changing the key to B flat, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate how all these notes, basically it'll just be me playing the way I play, combining all those three things together with the band behind. So here we go. Now in tandem with knowing the fingerboard well enough so that you know where the notes are that you want to play is the way you're going to finger these notes. And uh, I've developed a fingering technique that uh, changes up here and there, but basically comes down to the use of almost just two fingers. Kind of a claw effect. Uh, I'm using my first finger and uh, my little finger, which is being reinforced by the uh, third finger. And uh, I think the, this finger comes in to strengthen it a little bit as well, but primarily these two fingers are sort of webbed together and the pressure going on the pinky. Of course, I do use the other two fingers uh, in certain phrases, but uh, that might be part of what, if some of what I do when I play looks sort of confusing and, you know, hard to decipher, it's because I'm really only using these two fingers and leaping, jumping around the guitar. The way this particular technique developed was um, deciding I wanted to use my little finger. I hadn't been using it in my playing. I was using my first, second, and third. So uh, I found it to be very weak when I started working with it. So the uh, third finger I started using to support the little, little finger, give it a little more pressure, a little more strength. And in fact, the uh, second finger actually adds to it. And I guess even at times the first finger sort of helps to apply some pressure to it. So... Now this little idiosyncrasy has sort of become a strength for me. Uh, I seem to be able to get a lot of power and uh, put a lot of feeling and emotion into notes, particularly on bending and, on, uh, and whenever I'm using vibrato. So, for instance, just a... 
I f there's like a real, a lot of pressure that I can apply to these notes and uh, just get a lot of good energy out of them. Now, it could almost be regarded as a, as a weakness, I suppose, because I'm sort of limiting the use of my fingers to some extent. Uh, in other kinds of playing, you do have to sort of stretch out, you know, you exercise, do exercises to make sure you're using all of your fingers. But nonetheless, this has become a real powerful source of energy and emotion for me in terms of blues playing in particular. One of the most expressive qualities in blues playing is the use of vibrato. And uh, there are a lot of different styles, different ways of playing vibrato. B.B. King has his style, Albert Collins has his style, uh, Albert King. All the blues players have their own particular style of playing, and it actually uh, is a real definitive part of their playing. You can really tell them apart from each other, largely by their use of vibrato. Um, I'll show you a couple of particular types that have popped up in my playing. Uh, first of all, uh, as opposed to bending a note, holding it and putting a vibrato on it, I'm a lot more likely to play a line, land on my little finger, and actually push the string down, which I think is somewhat unusual. Uh, I may have picked it up from Albert Collins, who, who how, he doesn't use vibrato very much, bending a note and, and then playing it, but he hits this one note a lot. In fact, it's like 90% of Albert Collins' guitar solos is hitting that one note and uh, putting that kind of vibrato on it. I think he uses his third finger to do it. But... Uh, it feels real good to me, partially because I have a lot of strength in, uh, on this little finger. I can play vibrato on the low strings, even though they're pretty thick. Whereas it might be a little more, you know, you can't really bend with your first finger or second finger on those low strings too well, it really serves you to have your vibrato go down. On the high E string, you're really going to have to bend up and your vibrato will have to go that direction. But as I think you can see, I don't do a lot of combining the bending and vibrato technique. I play a note, play a phrase, land on the note that I want to hear the vibrato on, and play it. Now this actually turns up to be a, a lot of sort of jumping around the guitar again, as we were talking about earlier. I could practically play, uh, well I could play a very long phrase, using almost just that one finger. And again, the vibrato is a downward movement without the note being bent. The art of bending notes is also a very important ingredient in the blues style of playing. Uh, the notes can be bent uh, a lot of different intervals. You can bend them a whole step, uh, step and a half, two whole steps, and I think Albert King is even known for bending a, an entire fourth. Uh, it's a real emotive thing. Um, I can just play a few bends here for you just to illustrate that point. There's such a, that crying quality that you find in the bending of notes that's real emotive. Um, the pentatonic scale, really, you can bend the, any one of those notes up to the next one. And uh, they're probably the most common bending tones 
is just the notes from one point to the next in the pentatonic scale. From the first to the third, minor third of the minor pentatonic. From the minor third to the fourth. From the fourth to the fifth. From the fifth to the seventh. And the seventh to the tonic again. Now all of those examples came straight out of the G minor pentatonic scale. And uh, again, they are the most common ones used. But we also have bends that we can use from the previous, from the other two scales that we talked about. The first being the G minor pentatonic with the addition of the flatted fifth. So there's that bend, which is a half step. All the other ones we had a, either a whole step or a minor third. This is our first half step we've played. And there's also the other scale, which replaced the um, seventh with the major sixth, or the E, in place of the F. You can bend from D up to E. So there's a couple of more notes that we can actually use for bending. Now, uh, something else that I've found sort of uh, fun to play with is bending between the minor and the major third of uh, whatever chord we're in. So if we're playing in G, so we're bending between, which is the major third and the minor third. Right there again. I like that sound. I think I picked it up from Miles Davis. He did a lot of that, playing off major, th major third, minor third, and uh, a lot of chromatics in his playing. So that's similar to the half step between the fourth and the flatted fifth. You can also do it between the F and a half step up from there, particularly on the, the five chord, the D7. Again, minor third, major third there. So there's a few tips on, uh, on bending notes. Now I'm going to show you a couple of licks that you can play on the first four bars of a 12-bar blues progression. The key of C, there'll be a two-bar count off in front. I'll start playing in the second bar, and then the rhythm section will begin on the third. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. Now the first lick was based on that uh, pentatonic scale which included the flatted fifth and the second one that I played was the pentatonic scale which instead of using the seventh degree uh, used the sixth degree. So I'll play it for you one more time real slow and uh, hopefully you can see the difference between the two uh, licks in terms of the scale that I'm uh, relating to. So here's the first lick, played at a slower tempo. I'm starting on the tenth fret on the G string and bending up a whole step, and the second note will be high C. One more time.
Now the second lick uh, is bending on the B string up a half step. And this is based on that second scale again with the sixth instead of the seventh. So it goes like this. I hope you can hear that quality in there. Now I'll play two more lines for you that you can play over the next four bars of a 12-bar blues progression. Uh, the first chord here is going to be an F as we're playing, basically we're working on a 12-bar blues form in the key of C. This is the fifth bar of that progression. So it goes like this. One, two, three. Now here they are played at a slower tempo. Now we'll move to the last four bars of the same progression, and the first chord will be a G, then it'll move down to F, and then back to C. So here we are with the rhythm section. One, two, three, four. Here it is slow. So now we'll play all those licks strung together and we should have a full 12 bar blues progression under our hands. So here we go. Now let's talk a little bit about right hand technique. Uh, there are two approaches, which is the use of the pick and the use of your fingers. Each one has its own particular quality. Uh, the pick has somewhat of a glassier tone, and it's also good for faster passages, uh, in my case. And uh, the fingers can lend a little bit more of a poppy sound. That's sort of the way I use it to kind of snap the strings. Um, and in playing quieter, I like to use the fingers as well. Uh, just kind of gives me a little more contact with the instrument and a little bit more control of the tone. Now I use a triangular pick, uh, usually heavy or extra heavy, and uh, I tend to use the butt end of the pick to play as opposed to the point. So I hold it in this fashion and uh, play with the rounded end here. Now 
Now you notice I brought my fingers in to play there. Um, sometimes I'll play uh, holding the pick in this way and go ahead and use both at the same time. Or if I'm really into just playing with the finger specifically, I'll put the pick in between my fingers like so and just play with a thumb and basically the uh, middle finger on the right hand. That's a lot of thumb using it's just the thumb there. technique basically comes from just using whichever finger is the most convenient to get the string that I need. Thumb, first finger on the G string, second finger on the B string, and then I rarely use this finger. Some, well, never use the little finger. And uh, so it comes down to basically those, those three fingers playing whichever is the most convenient. It's, uh, I don't think about it too much. The style just sort of evolved by doing it rather than thinking about it. Um, I want to play kind of some slow-mo blues here for you so uh, you can see and hear some phrases at a nice pace and you might be able to pick a few of them up from the tape. So here's a, some 12 bar blues, key of C. Here we go. One, two, three.
So now we're going to talk a little bit about rhythm playing behind another soloist. And there's a few things that I want you to learn. Uh, there'll be a few chords that will reappear and voicings that even look alike that when moved to another uh, relationship to the chord that we're going to sound a little bit different. So first of all, I want you to learn this little series. It's basically a C scale, which is the key that we're in, harmonized in sixth, and that means that the notes are in intervals a sixth apart from each other. So I'll play the scale for you now. First, just uh, one note at a time. It goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. Now here's that scale played harmonized in six. We have an E on the D string, C on the B string, and we'll continue to harmonize them up the scale. So here it goes. Now that was one way of playing this scale across the neck of the guitar in this key. Uh, of course, anything that you uh, play, you can find in other places on the neck. The same notes can be played in different places on the guitar. So you should look around, find these all over the, the neck as much as possible. Now I'm going to demonstrate some little riffs that you can play against uh, a C7 vamp. So. Here we go. Three, four. So there's some comping against just uh, C7 chord. Now I'm going to play some repetitive patterns and use them against the chord changes of a C7 blues. So we'll get the rhythm section going here and just keep your eyes and ears open and uh, check this out.
Now I want to show you five chord voicings that I use a lot in blues. They can take you a long way. Uh, first of all, the first voicing is C7. This is the way I finger it. C on the bottom, B flat, E natural, and G on the B string, okay? You can play it this way if you like, but it makes it a little bit tougher to get the next voicing I'm going to show you, which is a very simple triad. This is an F triad spelled C, F, A. On the tenth fret, I'm barring it with just my third finger. Okay, the next chord voicing is a somewhat more sophisticated chord voicing uh, in that it contains a thirteenth, which is actually the sixth degree of the scale, key of C, but because it appears above the, the uh, root, uh, thirteenth away, thirteen scale points away, it's called a thirteen chord. Here's the voicing. We're still key of C. B flat, E natural, A with the little finger, C with the second finger. Now the next two voicings are both F9 voicings, but the second doesn't contain the third. Now the first one does, and it looks like this. There's an A natural, on the A string, E flat, G, C. And the other one can be played. It's exactly the same voicing, just in a different place on the guitar. But uh, I want you to play it with your first finger, deadening the lower strings. <laughs> deadening the lower strings. Uh, and not playing the third. So you've just got E flat, G, and C on your first finger. And that's how you can do that, which is very funky. So again, the voicings, C7, uh, F, C13, F9, and F9 without the third. So, now we're going to play through a 12-bar blues progression, and you'll see me utilizing these chords and uh, playing them in somewhat repetitive rhythm patterns, which is great. The blues is a somewhat simple and a repetitive form of music, which is really uh, one of its strengths. So, uh, particularly in comping, you can play the same rhythm and uh, almost the same chord voicings, and uh, it gives the whole thing some drive. So, uh, we'll get the band going here, and uh, I'll play some examples of that for you. So here we go.
now I'm going to play a few rhythms for you using uh, similar chord voicings but uh, with a different rhythm section underneath it and give you some ideas of how to play some rhythm against different rhythms, if you will. So I want to show you a couple more voicings. Um, the first being a B flat seven. Now here's a standard B flat seven voicing: B flat, D, A flat, B flat. Played like that. You probably have seen it before. Played in the key of C pretty often, right? So now we're going to move it up here to B flat. Now we're going to make a little change though. We're going to put the fifth on the top. So the voicing is D, A flat with the third finger, B flat with the first finger, F with the little finger. So this is a B flat seven chord. Of course, you can use it in all the positions on a blues. Now, two more seven chord voicings, which you might be familiar with, but anyway. Here's a B flat seven. Spelled B flat, F, A flat, D. And an E flat seven played like this. Very funky chord voicing here. B flat, E flat, G, D flat. And of course we can move this up a whole step for the five chord of the blues. So I'm going to give you a couple more rhythms now using those uh, particular voicings and uh, also the, uh, at least one of the voicings that I gave you before. So here we go.
So thanks again for joining me. I want to thank my friends Don Mock and Kathy Adolfson for helping to make this video, and I hope I've been able to pass along to you some of what I've learned, and maybe helped in giving you a sense of appreciation for a great musical art form, the blues.